Welcome everyone to the Puff Drink Talk podcast. I'm your host, Conrad Schubach. Dylan Wilson. Hilton Kill. George Abaij. And today we are going to be talking about and gas. Hold what about, hold on, I'm sorry. What about that? And it's George. And it's George. <laughs> and George. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. The subject. It's the best. It's the best, it's the best intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to be talking about gas, bad weather. Dinosaur fuel and football, as always. So strap in, grab yourself a a drink, a nice cigar, right. of course, of legal age, and coffee, and some coffee. Yeah. Yes, I brought yes. some coffee. Oh this is God. a uh, it yes. Ethiopian single origin coffee, guys. Is yeah. that uh, supposed to have like a fruity note to yeah, it? Yeah, it, it's I picked super that up strong, on the, but. Uh, I, my nose. The ratio was one to eighteen, which is huge. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers, to, cheers, cheers, to, cheers to everything. Just to everything. Like one yeah. to twelve. Yes. Um. This one is one eighteen. Okay. One to eighteen, and it's strong like that. I thought it's delicious. It's not a necessarily the coffee. taste, but the the profile, like the smell, was fruity. I know. I know. It is. It is. Like as I, I don't know something. something. And there's the only problem that because I was I was late. And then I had it's to fruity. I had to cover it. I have to close it and cover and cover it. Usually, I leave up to fifteen minutes before I serve. This one was like five minutes, so that affects a lot to taste, especially when it's also the it's it's in the metal. Yeah, sure. It's not sure. appropriate. I mean, you can drink it. It's good. It's okay. But I would say that if it's something like this, you know, like as you can see, yours. If, of course, uh, each of this is different, right? So. Uh, when it's drank here, it tastes bad. That's why I like to transfer as fast as possible. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I smelt it at your house, I'm like, oh, that's a great, great smelling coffee. Now I'm tasting, I'm going, it's been too long, it tastes like shit. So anyways. <laughs> right. Uh, it's like, where's the Folgers? Yeah. <laughs> Bring out that American shit. I want that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's actually really tasty. It actually is no, really tasty. American. You could have been... It could have been sitting out for hours, and I'd be like, oh, this is a really good fucking tasting coffee. Yeah, yeah. And just throw some good. milk in there. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Sugar. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, Sugar. some oh ice. Oh, my God. How dare you? Oh, my God. I, I can't look. I can't do coffee. I live shit. enough to listen to this. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do sugar on my coffee. Yeah, I can't either. But I have some if you need it. No, I'm okay. I'm all right. <sighs> I take my coffee like my women. Anyways, uh, so let's... <laughs> Not at all. I, oh, my God. Well, hot. It's hot and black. Hot. I'm just playing. Anyways, so let's get into... Strong uh, and bitter. Well, that too, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Packs of punch. Like all my exes. Packs of punch. What can I say? Overly strong and bitter. Tasty, taste and surprising for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that how oh, I see women, you know, yeah. I see my women. Floral, right? Floral, exactly. Floral, fruity. Yeah. Oh. The midis is all that. Okay, can I can say that? <laughs> anyway, so, so let's get into <laughs> let's get into the the, the topic today. So, uh, Cuba has been a safe haven for gasoline for years and years and years. It was actually the lowest. Or the only country with the lowest price of gasoline in the whole world. It's like 79 cents per, per, per gallon. gallon. Per gallon. Per gallon. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, and it was at, at times even cheaper. I mean, you're talking yeah, up until now, recently. Yeah. yeah. Up until recently, Three it was like ago. 20 cents. And now it's it's oh. spiked up to 79 cents. Oh. And now. It's outrageous. And, yeah, which is, which is amazing. Well, I mean, that it's. Cuba is unfortunately a very poor country, so um, it, it, yeah, it's proper. It's it's appropriately priced for the economy of Cuba, but now the government's going to increase prices by five hundred percent. So now gas prices are going to be about three dollars and eighty cents a gallon, which that sounds like oh well in America that's what we're paying. But the equivalent would be if we had a pipe. Uh, 20 uh, cents, you said it, right? Before. Yeah. 20, 20 to 79 cents, and now it's at 380. 
the equivalent of, of it times. happening would be yeah, fifteen times. So you would be paying about twenty bucks a gallon of gas. Thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah. The the equivalent uh, twenty thirty. Happen. Yeah. So I mean, could you imagine paying twenty twenty to thirty dollars a gallon, dollars a gallon, here in the United States? It'd be. I, I, I don't accept, <laughs> but I can imagine. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so all of you Tesla drivers out there have no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Unless you're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the beauty of living in Texas, though. You know, we all just pull my horse out of the stable. Yeah, that's true. I'm paying no gas. You know how much hay is a lot cheaper than gas. That is true. Yeah, that is true. So I could see that end up happening if that ever did hit the United States where gas prices became uh, egregious. I gotta go back to horse. Go back to horses. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons, this, and this is one of the reasons that the United States actually um, operates in so many countries, and especially in the Middle East, so they can have an idea what's going to happen, you know, and then get ready, uh, because we are talking about trillions, right? right? So this is one of the reasons. Well, in the United States, is trillions. <laughs> trillions. 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 Yeah, the trillions. Uh, well, the United States is actually one of the largest producers of oil, too. Mm -hmm. So we have massive exports. Alaska, and Texas, right? Alaska, Texas. I mean, if you drive up 35 towards Georgetown, um, we'll start seeing those oil. You do head north and headed back south. There's a huge billboard that says, "Hey, Joe Biden, buy <laughs> oil from Texans, not terrorists." <laughs> and the biggest <laughs> black bold text you could read. Hey, Biden, buy oil from Texans, not terrorists. Yeah. We do have some oil here as well. Yep. Got to remind them. Well, and, it, and it's funny you say that because when I bought my house, they have a clause in the paperwork that you cannot drill for oil. Yep. And if you do drill for oil and it does strike, you have a lot of legal legal issues that you have to, environmental and, and stuff like that, that you have to jump through. Well, when you buy a plot of land, too, that's you buy the plot of land. So there's different um, than buying the soil, buying the soil right. or the airspace. They're all there's yeah. three different things. So when yes. you buy a plot of land, you didn't buy the rights to the minerals and stuff underneath it. Um, that's so true that if you buy a, a land, buy a piece of land here, how many f there, there is a maximum floors you can you can, yeah. you can produce, you know, like you yeah. can build it, you can build it. So. Because you don't own the airspace here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah. You can purchase it. But, but you know what? And this is one of the disadvantages that we are talking about I mean, in our previous podcast, I think. When um, the first settlers, or even 50 years, 60 years ago, when they bought land. They bought everything. They bought they? everything. Yeah. So they look at the, look at the advantage they have starting that way. Oh, now it changed. So yes, now that you transform all of this in billions, and I didn't have this opportunity, so let me have this opportunity now. Right. No, no, I I had it, but you can't. You can't. But why? Because that's the way it is. Rules change. Rules change. Yeah. Uh, now. Yeah, more subtle, right? Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so that's a sticker shock for a lot of Cubans. Um, we'll see how that pans out for them. That's the probably the future of uh, Venezuela too. Gas will soon, but they have it in law, huge reserve. They yeah. have huge reserves have for, there. for many decades. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it won't happen to them before. I don't yeah. see it. I think I think Cuba is so heavily heavily reliant on imports and and just because they don't export too much, so they have. What their, do they export? What do they export? I don't know. Nuclear cigars. weapons. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, cigars oh are God. just a tiny little bit. I mean, yeah. yeah. It doesn't pay for the whole economy. Yeah. No, but I'm just, just to me, you know, it's a puff podcast. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I have an interesting thing on, 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 on Cuba. Uh, well, not on Cuba, but on Cuban cigars. I was um, researching uh, this Brazilian guy that um, he has like a, uh, YouTube channel and then he calls himself the Mr. Cigar but in Portuguese mm. and then his um, store is not up and running and it was a store on Facebook but for some reason it's not up and running but his channel is too active and I think that is because he took all everything down because YouTube would start 
you know, uh, tracing that down and say, well, you are promoting, you know, tobacco, which is against our policies because you cannot promote tobacco. You can smoke, but you cannot promote it. Right. And you cannot, I can, we cannot say go and buy somewhere air because they're going to pick up and then they're going to uh, take the video out, right? Right. So basically, I think that's what that's what happened to him because now he doesn't have that anymore, right? So he's. Um, but nevertheless, I went to the internet to try to find it, and I found a website which is not these guys, right? A website, and I found a website, and I was comparing prices in dollar, like doing the, the translation of the currency mm -hmm. in dollar and then I went to UK uh, on a UK store and I saw the price of the same Cuban cigar right and in Brazil it was like $70 cheaper to buy a box of 25 huh, than, than in UK it's like oh, that, that's the very first time I see anything first and like on the market to be bought cheaper in Brazil than uh, anywhere else in the world because in Brazil everything import. is so expensive because of the the import tax, import tax and whatnot and yeah. tobacco has it's not only import huge, taxes right it's well, uh, but, greed yeah that is yeah. greed as well but then you know but tobacco has a huge huge Lobby. in Brazil um, like taxation on it it's one of the main exports isn't it coffee and tobacco no, I'd say that this orange is huge, and then wood and then tobacco. In the south, used it's number to be one in the south tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, tobacco used to be Meat. like one of the, the mm -hmm. biggest like uh, exports. Yeah. yeah. But coffee. nevertheless, I mean, in the UK, taxes in UK are also very high on tobacco. Um, yeah. But I don't know how much of that. But I, I looked at the you know the, the the cigar shop that we normally watch videos from. Mm -hmm. And it's just like they are expensive because they're famous. Yeah. And in Brazil, it's cheaper. <laughs> Pick some up next time you're down there. <laughs> I was gonna say now. Now there's a reason to go down to Brazil and grab some Cuban cigars. Yeah, forget UK now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how how often do you go? Once, twice a year. Once every two years, maybe. Okay, I go every year. So definitely next time, uh, I will. I won't bring Cuban, Cuban cigars because it's illegal to bring Cuban. But cigars. you can go yeah, buy over there and smoke over there. I can try and smoke there and laugh at you guys. But the, the thing, the <laughs> thing is, no. For example, but but that's the thing. I mean, you go in there, you buy. <laughs> let's say you're going to spend yeah. thirty days there. You buy a box of twenty-five. Have one cigar a day. When I had my birthday in Brazil, my brother-in-law. He bought me a Cuban cigar. Again, I don't know if it's a true Cuban cigar. I just said Cuba all over it. But it was actually... Probably not then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably Man, if you have to have say... To tell you have you ever seen a king saying he's a king? Yeah. So <laughs> It could well, be, though. I've, I've seen be. a president I'm not gonna ruin your say multiple times he's cigar. the best president in the world. So it but, could... But does he say this way? No, he says it more extravagant ways. It does he use it in hands? Yeah, too? yeah. Okay, so he talks I'm, very funny. Let me see. Yeah. 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 Trump. <laughs> can I say that? Yeah, you can take it out. Did he win the support in I'm Iowa from it every out. single county at the caucus? Yeah. Not a single one didn't vote for him? That's crazy. No, that that's is not crazy. true. One voted for Nikki Haley. Do you see what, I, do you see what happened then? Mm -mm. Of course, Democrats paid the county to vote in favor of that. This is like crazy. I didn't read into all of it. The one thing I read just said that he won every county. 98. But... But do you know why they say 98 and 9? No. Because they never lose. Well, they don't ever lose. Clearly, that's why he's not president right now. He never loses. <laughs> uh, but, that being said, Nikki Haley, um, her speech afterwards was like, made it sound like she was the number two behind Trump. She was like, clearly, after all this, we can show that there's, there's two of us. And she finished third, not yes. second. So whoever her riders are did not update it her It was speech. very tight, right? It was, very it was tight. tight, but that means they were, when they wrote her speech, they assumed she'd be in second, and they didn't do the, the due diligence of switching that up after she didn't get second and got third. Who was second? Uh, Ron DeSantis. 21%. And then Vivek, Vivek, Ron Vivek. Swami, whatever, he Vivek. dropped and um, endorsed Trump. Well, but it's, it was oh, so really? embarrassing. I saw that. Trump, like, 
presented him. You know, I know he was in New Hampshire because they. No I watched there. a video of a like a behavior <laughs> specialist breaking that down. <laughs> For like a body language expert, like breaking yeah. down their handshake, and he was like grabbing his shoulder. And... Man, it was funny. It was interesting. Yeah, I saw that. I'll like... have to watch it. I'll uh, have to watch it. Oh my god, it's it was funny. He was just like, "Come on, the guy." Of course, he only ran because he knew. <laughs> the end of these. He knew it. He would be working. I wouldn't yeah. expect you to. You don't watch. <laughs> you don't watch any news, and no. I don't either. I just see what makes it on social media, which is even more than what you do. <laughs> I do the bare minimum. Of keeping up to date with what's going on and it's not even to keep up with date keep up what's going i just want to see what's going on with sports and memes and what's going on in sports not much mm. well we'll get into it we'll get into it okay. no, no, <laughs> so on. anyways so cuba so cuba is facing that crisis which leads into well why doesn't cuba just invest all of their resources and funding into electric vehicles that makes sense right well, another interesting article is that uh, Hertz, one of the largest uh, car rental services in the United States mm-hmm. and other countries, they operate, I believe, believe in Puerto Rico and other places. Uh, anyways, they are selling a vast majority, if not all, of their EVs and going strictly back to dinosaur fossil fuel ran vehicles exactly just because it's easier for the maintenance and um and maintaining and all of the costs that incur incurs with people getting stranded for not charging their yes. battery and whatnot so so interesting paradigm shift moving away i thought for sure that evs were going to be and then of course you always hear about ford uh slashing their production of evs uh, GMC is slashing their production of EVs. Um, I think Tesla is the only EV producing vehicle manufacturer that's like, yeah, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and increase sales. So uh, interesting, interesting shift. I mean, we were, you know, we were told that EVs are the future, and obviously it's not panning out to be like that. So I, uh, I don't know how it's going to, I don't know how it's going to proceed in the future. What are your guys' thoughts? Is the Cuban government buying all the electronic vehicles? Well, they're not buying any. They're not buying any. Vehicles from Hertz? Uh, <laughs> that might be a smart I know, move. I know. Uh, he was coming, like, something is coming there. You know, like, he was like, Chow, yeah. <laughs> but then he brought it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because I was thinking, is Cuba opening up? To the market? Do you think so? Yeah, are are yeah. they um, letting go of the communism and, and going partial? No. So socialism? Socialism? The next step, you mean? Some sort yeah, of no, no, going system. like partial, like China, it's partially owned by the government, but it's the private sector, the private runs the company, and then in Cuba, it's the, op- it's the other way around. So they have uh, private money invested, but then the, 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 government, the government runs it, right. the companies. Uh, I'm just wondering. Check whether they are doing business with <laughs> bricks. Maybe they're. Maybe probably Cuba is going to start dealing with bricks, because it's very strategic. It's a very strategic place in case there is something else going on. You know, Could, so like the U.S. have Taiwan. Yeah. The Russians or the China. China would have, uh, you know, uh, um, Cuba very close to Florida. So the bricks, definitely, if they. Probably they are dealing with that, so it's not open or half open. It's just that but the again, is a big market. But again, I mean, that still poses the question: What does Cuba have to offer? Because countries are ran off of imports, exports, providing goods and services to others. What does Cuba offer other than, you know, tourism? Yep. Probably some fruit. Obviously, like we we just discussed, cigars. Like, they have such a limited amount of resources and capabilities. Yeah, so I don't know what Cuba was in the past. I mean, was it like a more like a, as a playground kind of was it, Vegas? It was beautiful no, round kind it was, of thing. It was beautiful. It was, uh, uh, the tourism was growing. Uh, the only problem is that it was used for tourism, sexual tourism a lot. Yeah, for step. Yeah, actually, that's why I say <laughs> yeah, I try to avoid use that word. But yeah, exactly. So, sexual tourism. Word. No, no, no. Yeah, I know, I know. But uh, 
the the concept right sexual tourism right so one of the reasons one of the main arguments that Epstein's Island or something? Castro used it it was like yeah we we don't want to be slaves of you know huh interesting yeah one of the reasons why right yeah. Uh, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not too familiar with Cuba, other than the Cuban Missile Crisis and Bay of Pigs. Right? Baseball, baseball players. Baseball players. A lot of baseball, baseball players. Baseball players. Rum. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so some big like rums. coffee. Uh, athletic, yeah. Athletic. Uh, athletic sports too. I'm sure in the past it was a big, big producer, like in the pirate time, like in the 17, 1800s. It was a producer of cane sugar. Cane sugar. Yes. Did they not export like? other types of agricultural goods because you would think being closer to the equator you'd have pretty like fertile soil they i mean they do no, have i think the they do. Soil. soil i mean that's where export i think they export the everything they do uh it's just i mean it's it's not it's talked about country. because it's exactly it's not a lot right like they can be any country you know can over produce whatever they're producing sure yeah so, but anyway, so, yeah, so, I mean, that is an interesting idea is that Hertz would buy, you know, or, or sell. could buy, sell all of their electric vehicles to Cuba or some strategic move like that. But, but I mean, main industries, uh, guys. North yes, North Korea. Petroleum. Those assholes. Petroleum. <laughs> oh, really? Nickel. Cobalt. Chokes on you. Pharmaceuticals. Tobacco. Construction. Steel. Lithium. Cement, agriculture, machinery, and sugar. Hmm. So this is basically what it, what they uh, and they ex, uh, they export. You see how they export petroleum, nickel, yes, all these things, fish, fish, citrus, probably. I guess I don't know. Orange, with orange, citrus, right? Citrus, yeah. citrus, 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 citrus. Yeah, thought... yeah, like citrus, like what the hell? Oh, is that a type yeah. of fish? <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. In coffee. Ah, so in coffee, right? It, they, yeah, and they import petroleum, food, machinery, chemicals. You know, all they manufacture. How do you say manufacture in German? No. I was reading the cup, and it just reminded me of it. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the. Uh, this is from. Uh, it's a glass. It's a, not a glass, right? Because it's not made of glass, so it's a cup. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it's a cup that i got it in 2010 29 2010 i bought it it was quite interesting because it was a very tiny city that for three days a year everybody dresses from the from the medieval period huh. nothing can be made nothing is made in a in the modern era. in the modern area everything was done like with machinery they have it everything settled three days a year so I decided you bought you bought a blue vine, which is a kind of a sweet wine. Yeah. You buy the blue vine, you pay an extra euro, and they give you this. And where is this? This is uh, near Stuttgart. Yeah, it's a city, a city close to Stuttgart. Uh, yeah, so uh, Essling is mm -hmm. the city. Cool. Essling. So 2010, so it's what, 14 years old. That's cool. Yeah. Good I mean, craftsmanship. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and I've been using this. Sense, you know, and tradition like, every day on that sense right? yeah because yeah i think i'm trying to honor it yeah i'm yeah. trying to honor it i think we need to do that here in the united states where everyone's like hey you gotta go back to your roots want to be a beet farmer go be a beet farmer for three days can't wear any so everybody got mad at trump for it. but then would have to be trump every to be <laughs> hey i'm just saying like in case a natural would that bring to the <laughs> back to the future <laughs> Bring you back, back to, to the, the past. Back, back to the past. Yeah. Five. You more than five minutes that. without smoking. Still going. I just. Just puff it. Look, look at that. There you go. Mm, now you drink. Yeah. And I like well, it. Let's start. <coughs> yes. So anyway, so that's what's happening. The only issue is, if you're like the rest of us here in the United States, you are, you are freezing your bollocks off, because it is very, 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 very cold. And now people from the Chicago area are starting to realize that Teslas do not do very well Ooh. in the cold. So they don't. as only, our only, resident. Only Tesla or any electric car? I think Tesla because. Only Tesla and only Chicago. 
Yeah, they mentioned they mentioned that they they made they made sure to mention that right. He's geotagged. Yes, and then yeah, because yeah, Rivian's illegal in Chicago. Those charging well, BMWs. They're yeah, illegal. They're illegal in Chicago. Yeah, just because Elon Musk is a somewhat conservative owner, he needs to get the negative attention. Okay. <laughs> I like him. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. That's <laughs> well, the only like reason. Days without an incident, you know? So he's had too many. Yeah. There's an incident coming soon. <laughs> There's going to have to be. It's going to have to be. It's been too calm. Long. There's a storm coming. Uh, that's the only reason I'm bringing it up because it specifically goes after Tesla. It doesn't say all EVs, GMC, Ford. What does that tell you? Rivian. It's like a hit piece yeah. on Tesla and on. So it's, it's being political. But you know what? This, this is very. In, but this is very complicated because when people talk about well about the company, they say Tesla too, even though it's not a Tesla. But not so the same. Works, not the same people. No, not the same there people. There are people saying. But good you things benefit. About but Tesla you, you benefit from when they say good things, and you of course you. You pay the price you when they say badly. You benefit and then you malefit. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> what do you think? No, I'm, I'm being I'm being very honest. I, I'm just asking you if that's not true. Context, I think, is an important caveat to whether it's true or not. Because I think, depending on who says something, that kind of tells you how much weight it carries. Mm -hmm. Four-year-old comes and says, who is the that? sky is yellow. The sky's not yellow. You yeah, know? So, definitely. So anybody could say anything. Does it make it true? And a lot of what we see in the news is not fact checked. It's There's a lot of people a saying that the sky is yellow. Saying the sky yeah. is yellow, so to speak. You know, it's like they're just it's opinion and it's subjective and it's about Tesla. It's not about electric. It, isn't it crazy right. that in a world that things should be tending to be more objective, mm -hmm. we are getting victims of subjectiveness? Of course that. Yeah. Uh, the you know like there is this culture of being more individual so more individualist you are more differences you have i understand but right then it's getting to the point that you you know like you you can tell you can't trust you right. can't tell anything i think your individuality is not going to be individual anymore it's going to be more in a group how 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 do you identify Oh well, I identify as this. Oh well, there's a group. There's a group for that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I there's think a group for that that thinks like that. Everybody has, suffers. Yeah, radicalized like group. That. Act, Some yeah. sort of things influence. Like you know, it doesn't matter if you're not. I don't. I don't. But then, if you, if you have your eyes open and your ears open, you're gonna be influenced. Yeah. How about here in the U.S.? One of the things I. By the way, let me make a complaint here about the, the weather that you just mentioned. I was told that, that there would be summer all year long in Texas when I came here. You were lied so to. Right, I was see lied how to. How influenced did you get? <laughs> I was lied to. I was lied to. Should have gone to Florida. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I told... <laughs> I, California. Because I told... Uh, they, they've got some... California right now is cold. Yeah, it's, it's cold. Florida's now. warmer, but... yeah. No, it's, it's funny because when summer. we moved when we moved over here from California, our other Brazilian friends, when I convinced them to come out here, they were like, I was like, oh, it never snows in, in Texas. Like, it'll never, it's never cold. Those Two weeks after they move here, it snowed. They're like, they sent me a video. They're like, Conrad, what the hell is this? I know, I know, <laughs> I know, right? And I'm like, I don't know. Actually, I lied to we're you. We're experiencing this together. Yeah. <laughs> I've been yeah. lied to. It's new. I was born here. Well. <laughs> they lied to me. me. They lied to me. They lied to me my whole life. I've never seen snow. You know when you jump in the pool and they say, oh, the water is great. So just come in. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then the poster jumps like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. 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 It's freaking yeah. gold. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. you, too. Yeah. <laughs> so That's exactly what I've been lied to. My, I've been lied to, right? I definitely. Sure, we all have. Right. Second thing is that I realized that when I came here, I was what my credit score was. Right? So I had to start from scratch. Very young. Very young. Very young, right? So it takes five years for you to get to 800. Right? So a solid. Unless you know somebody. Unless you know somebody. Yeah, yeah. you can be part of the Credit bureau. Unless, or unless Sorry, you do, do not depend on it. Yeah. 
But my point is circular transactions. Yeah, it's illegal, it, but I can exactly I'll talk right. To you so the I have to open like I don't know, seriously, like twenty credit cards or something like this. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Like anyway, so you have five million. No, 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 no. You don't have the credit. But I have like, buy cash. Then then you have to buy cash, yeah. or the the, the interest stupid, rate like, is really cash high. Advanced cards and stupid shit you have to do to try and get approved. But you know what is worse than credit? Or you know what is worse than credit to score? Personal score in China. You, have you heard about oh, personal oh, score? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What did you guys hear? Um, so there's a Black Mirror episode about that, too. Um, I like that episode, too. It's a trippy episode of, like, where it just, where the future, where we had it. But it's, it's... Is that the, from the chick from the... A Black Mirror is a series. No, 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 no I watch it. Yeah, yeah, I say that. I know it's episode. It's Dallas. Episode, episode one. Episode one. Season five. Season five. Ah, no, I don't know which episode. It is, it is, it is. I don't know which one it is. It's Bryce Dallas Howard. She's the redhead. From the Dino. From, from yeah, the, from, Jurassic, from Jurassic World. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's the one, right? Where she yes. made a complaint about her friend. Exactly. And it started it's going not just downhill. Huh? And you are bringing that up because in Chicago, China also China. has EVs from personal China. scores. China. Like China? No, I think. My point. I'm China, just, China, just trying China. to bring it back to the subject. <laughs> Why back? Well, I, I thought the, the subject was over. I just the way it. through is on. There was a forward. ten second. There were ten second. We never go backwards on this podcast. Five seconds. <laughs> Five seconds. Stop. Are you? Are you kidding me? We yeah, move like, forward or, you or slow? we die. It's free subject after to five seconds. Around, five I seconds. Yeah. No, five seconds for me. <laughs> to turn around is to die. I want to know. Yeah. No, hold on, because I'm, you know, I'm all the, I'm all the herds. One direction on the track. I want to know. Oh, if, you want to explore the no, topic? I understand. Sorry, 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 sorry. So he wants to explore the topic. Yeah. Right. So I want to know. Well, because segment. you know, Cora is bringing the subject. I'm going to explore a little bit. So is Hertz selling the EV cars that they have in Chicago? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how they're going to sell it because. It's going to be dead on site. There's no battery. Be like, this is what it is. You can't drive it off the lot. Just, you know, bring your jumper cables and maybe you can get somewhere. A generator. Uh, a gas powered generator to. Well, it's I've, seen, the... I've seen some, you know, guys uh, having like a generator in the back of a, of a, of a lightning. Yeah. yeah, I've seen it in F1 lightning. Yeah. And then they stop and then they turn it on. And then they leave it charging, and then they go eat or something like that. When they come back, they desperate times. Oh, Just desperate measures, telephones, man. right? So iPhone four. Who back. had he the iPhone four? Do you remember how he was? Oh my goodness! Mm. It was great. I had the three GS. iPhone four. You have to charge it every three hours. When he, when he get when he got old, you know, oh, no, because uh, of plenty yeah. of obsolescence yeah well, i was back in the day where it's like if you uh, left it i charging, had the three and then the three it just have to leave it plugged it's killing that battery <laughs> yes you have to where's the outlet the exactly no, no, man. I, I i had wearables i had wearables it was, it was i would on a wear phone. Was a you know in my hat around me instead of putting my pocket i was wearing wearables because it, but the battery would last three, it would last three, three hours yeah so it's been worse now how now it's like what now it's uh 24 hours the battery at least yeah i can get i can get about 24 hours from mine yeah the new ones are incredible the 15 sam has one and it's do you need a proper paper yeah come over here it'll go like almost (laughs) there's been a day where she i mean guys it's four games yeah So, anyways, uh, to to wrap up those subjects, uh, yes, I, 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 if you want to get dive deep into it, it's it's. I mean, it's like a lettuce. It's I'd very, like I'd like to do an no episode this is... only on Chinese <laughs> score because Honestly, it's a, saying, such a great subject. He didn't do the research and development of all. He just we read a headline and we read the article and we know he didn't know. Yeah. How dare you? I'm just saying. I'm just I don't saying, know. I, I read, know. I I read. But it's like a piece of lettuce. Like, there's not too much meat off of it. You're not he's getting asking, too in depth. No. You're not. You sorry, are the type of questions my he wants capacity. to answer. Actually, I had the <laughs> first hand. He knows that. He's just being a reporter here, <laughs> who who gave me the, the news. Been a I had the news straight from the because he said it. You know, you just read it. The article. Yeah. Right? So no, I have the like here. 
Well, but also the first hand I mean, source here. Hilt I mean Hilton is a proud Tesla owner, so I mean we could get his opinion and his experiences with this cold weather. I'm not that proud of Tesla. I just like the BMW, yeah. honestly. It took How'd you like it? How how That's long good. did I take to decide on buying that car? I mean after well, it took having the car for like it took him a couple of weeks. Four hours test driving test driving it, like Trying to get the seat position correct, the foot position correct, everything was. It's a tech company, it's not a car company. I'm not that. You know, I no. like it just because it has a large battery in it. I'll yeah. engage, you know, I'll engage the with conversation with later. Right. But so, in in the cold, how is the Tesla performing? Well, right now, I, I have to charge pretty much every day instead of every three days. Uh -huh. Just because during the day, you know, being cold, it the battery you know keeps on using it to keep the car warm and the battery warm or uh, cool in the summer and it's like it's always i guess probably spring and fall are going to be the least con least amount of consumption on that battery right yeah and then when it's summer it uses but it doesn't use as much as in the winter in the winter to keep it warm yeah. right i was reading on about tesla's uh power roof they have like this the roof tiles that yeah are actually it's not solar like solar panel. panels it's actually like almost solar shingles yeah embedded in the roof and uh, Marquez Brownling, the guy like the tech guy always does reviews on Apple and stuff real big on YouTube um, he bought it installed it in his house tested it for a year and then made a YouTube video on it and he said you definitely get a drop off in um, efficiency in summer and in winter due to how much work it has to do to maintain but in the spring and the fall it's like almost free it's like huh. free energy interesting yeah my my solar panels you have the same as mine uh no i think our solar panels brand is different but we use the same company right the provider for the energy yeah um it's in the summer it does i mean the air conditioning we use it so much that you know it doesn't generate enough energy and it's in in the winter it's a little bit better i i could well, well i want to have a topic on just talking about that because please because so far my solar panels haven't done shit for me my point is i didn't want to say because you guys have it but uh there is a, a pay uh, there's a payback that i heard here in texas which is like 20 years for the playback for, for the payback yeah and I'm, I'm not i'm never gonna because see of that. the curves well you're almost curves. better off buying a home with solar to a degree it depends on how long you're gonna stay in the home it depends it's not a good investment for much. profit up in price Our line. the energy is gonna go well and and to that point i mean that is a valid point but let's save it for another day because i'd like to yes. dive into that because there was a whole news thing about that so cost yeah. effectively i think a lot of people are doing the new like spray foam insulation um it's very effective that's and what i have in my house modern it's it's really which one it's spray a spray foam, foam. Oh, it's the new spray, spray foam, foam insulation mm -hmm. that it is, expands it's expand it expands and it, it's just really Oh, you put it between. It's the expensive, walls. yeah, no, and okay. actually, yeah, everywhere for, for the insulation. Yeah. It's expensive, but it works really well. And like a brand new home, it was just built. Let's say it's like, what's the average home size? Eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred square feet, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, your energy bill on average is probably gonna be like seventy bucks, give or take. But yeah. like that's everything. You know, that's it could be in the winter, it's gonna go up to a hundred or something like that. Where most houses that size have energy bills of over two hundred. You know, so it's definitely it's like a third of the cost just with the new technology. Do you know how much it costs? A new build, not as much as it costs if you're trying to add it to your current house now. But I've heard people's fifteen, twenty grand or so. Twenty grand, seven dollars. Right. So let's say a yeah. hundred dollars. Solar panels? No, no, no. The spray foam insulation. Right. So twenty grand. Like expanding hundred foam insulation. Well, if you're gonna do the whole house, it would cost that much. Yeah, right? I think if one thousand, ten thousand, eight thousand. So yeah, seven year, eight year return plus the interest Sorry. rate. So okay. ten years to get the money back. Sorry, in the savings. You're right, <laughs> but it takes ten years to get the money back. Still. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, yeah. to try and get to Dylan's answer here, um, I think if you're doing the whole house, it'd be like around twenty grand, like all the walls and and, and the ceiling, or the roof. That's what I. But was just the roof, I think it's six thousand. Six thousand or some eight thousand, depending on the size. But I'm factoring in the whole house, the comparing whole house. it to a new. Sure, sure. I'm yeah. just comparing it to like a no, new build that has it everywhere versus mm -hmm. one that doesn't, and then you're adding it. it. You could spend up 
to probably about twenty thousand on it. But right. new build, you factor that into your payment, yada yada yada. Depend, You'll save a lot more energy. Depending on the size of the house, solar. I've seen I've seen people. It's easy, right? Being so like, it's easy to put it on six hundred dollars a there's month on an No maintenance. And then for them, a solar panel, um, it's like they're now spending a hundred dollars, and then plus whatever the the solar panel is, let's say. 300 a month and then it's 400 so they are actually already you know 200 dollars better yeah technology is beautiful man i have a friend who actually you know that happening to him and the people that buy the house for me for you sale. probably not because my house is really mm. really old. i would be interested actually to yeah. see the roi on solar though yes. i'd be i'd be curious to see data on that because <clears throat> You spend mm-hmm. sixty, eighty thousand on solar. What do you expect to get back out when you sell it? Because surely, if you compare two houses, one has solar, one doesn't. It's going to sell for more. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you don't sell for more, but guarantees that you sell it. It's more um, it's true. Yeah, people are going to seek that out more for sure. Yeah, because come on, right? It's one of the, the one of the first things you you look right. For is sure. it working? How much is in air conditioning and, and a furnace? Uh, it's like thirty thousand dollars if you think about the whole thing. Sure. And um, so it makes the whole difference. Sometimes well, it almost, it. almost get... make it worth it to rip yes. all of the sheer rock in your house and then, you know, insulate it and then put it back on and paint down. Potentially. Out. Yeah. All in the sake of staying warm. Or cold. Or cold. Do yeah. you guys Which have a generator? Which is all the sake of being comfortable. Do you have a generator for the, for the winter? No. No? Do you have it? In my house, yes. no. oh, I, I have it in my He has here, a portable generator. Right. But yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying because uh, we are considering that because, man, 2021, 2023, mm-hmm. and 2024, but not not yet. But the snow and the problems we had. I feel like we'll get a freeze this year. Yeah. Again, I just what, think March. so. I think it's going to happen more frequently. It February. actually happens in February. February, yeah. February, February is always it's seems our to coldest be... month. It's February is always been our coldest. February 13th, man, I never forget. <laughs> like, really? Your have, Valentine's Day? Uh, yeah, so 13, 14, 15, we had, it, we had to leave home because we didn't have power, we didn't have... Man, we, we tried it. We tried it. We turned on the the fire the fireplace. We put our bed. We put our bed... In the fireplace. In front of the fireplace. Oh, okay. Three, you know, everything. But the point is when you wake up, when you when you race, when, when you just get up, get out of the bed... You never recover the, uh, that heat. the yeah. heat. Trying to get back. So we, yeah, you never recover it. It's just like partially. And then after forty-eight hours, you had to leave. Yeah, you vacated. Yeah, I vacated. In the search of warmth. Exactly. You see that? So which primal could be what the Houston Texans need to do this weekend uh, when they go to Baltimore. <laughs> and uh, is that it? The games? Yeah, it's a weird setup there. And we have the Battle of the Lobos. Only what, four, really? four games, fellas. No display of the logos? We gotta go the logos. No, this, this is NFL. They, they don't, they're not showing it this week unless I mess around with... Boom. You like the logos? I yes. like the logos. <laughs> I need the logos, my friend. <laughs> by, the, by the way, did you guys see how how I a video vote? explaining how the logos changed for... I, I, I got to watch it, yeah. Maybe I would um, encourage you when you have time to go back and watch our videos from week one uh, forward. Mm-hmm. You might find some cool stuff in there. Yeah, man. I, you see, that it was so pretentious of me. Like, oh, look what I have for these guys. And then, of course, in episode one, they did that. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit pretentious. <laughs> Well, I tried to call out well, but it was no, I altruistic. It. Yeah. It, it was altruistic. I, I, I do appreciate it. I appreciate the effort. Yes. But I, I, I would At like the same that time to go watch our fucking podcast. Jesus but me, <laughs> I don't think there's much I'll be able to explain or teach you about like Pele. If that makes sense. Or any type of Brazilian sport. Or, I've been following football yeah. for so long that even the, uh, the Miami sideline thing. I don't know that we talked about that on the podcast no i don't think we did but i know all about it just because i'm a freak but i like that you're thinking about that kind of stuff and that's a good conversation we could talk about that oh, on, yeah. a, on a podcast but you haven't seen them before no and no, it makes sense miami's stadium and that it's an open stadium so the yep. sun comes in so this side the way it's <laughs> built all the sun goes over here yeah so the home side will is always like 40 degrees 
cooler than the away side. That's so crazy. So in the summer, they are cooking over there. But there's one more thing. It's their home They the always advantage. play with uh, light colors, and they they force the other team yeah. to play with a, with a oh, darker yeah, that's color. The, so the home yeah. team gets to pick their jerseys. So they've, yes. they've decided that their home color is their white jerseys. Yes. So every away team has to wear their dark color, yes. whatever that is. So obviously darker colors, and the pigment holds on to the sun. The Patriots, if I'm not mistaken, the, the Patriots, uh, they always bring... A big like cover. They'll where they stay. cooling benches and stuff. You, too. you see, they break they, crazy. Like this too, too low. Yeah, it's a strategy. Know. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't I'm know much if it was fair. Last yeah. season or the one before, but we went to Washington and uh, they weren't gonna provide us with like the warm seats or something. So Jerry Jones like shipped all of our own like Cowboys branded hot seats for the sidelines like ahead of the game. Huh. And then when Washington came to play us, he like blocked them from being able to bring anything into the state. Yeah. Some weird shit like. Believe that. me, There's every single sort of sport, every single edges, sport you know? has yeah. these edges, right? So because when the competition is so close, you've got to find a way. I found right? a clip earlier that I'll show you. On the podcast. Is so, that the politics around the the sport? I guess. I guess there's All a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens. Uh, so let's talk about who won last week. Okay, I did. No, I didn't. I did. I only picked three. I think. I got four out of six. Everyone yes. else got three out. Of six. Yes. Oh, okay. So we didn't do too bad. And I went two games. No, three games against you guys. No, yeah. two games against you guys. Yeah. I did one. One real heel that nobody thought would win. The Buccaneers. The Buccaneers, who will probably lose this week. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. We have the Houston Texans at the Baltimore Ravens. Hilton, we, can you uh, put on the screen, please? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. We obviously are in the divisional round. It's win or go home. Everybody's looked pretty good. Everybody should know what they uh, what they know at this point. Nothing to tell anybody. Yes. You just make a pick. I'm birds. Birds? Yeah. Ravens. I'm also going. You know, it sucks because I'm actually. I really want the Texans to win. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vote the Ravens, but I want the Texans to win. I'm really rooting for them. Again. Same here. It's same here. It's a hedge, emotional hedge. Yep. Do you know what I was? Uh, I was uh, thinking, the team of the people, the yeah. Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They kicked the Seahawks rear end out. By winning Jesus their Christ. game, they also did the same thing too. And then they did the same thing to Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So they're 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 a bunch of assholes. The <laughs> the 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 Green Bay Packers are hey. the team of the people, but are not the team of our podcast. <laughs> There's not much scarier than a team with nothing to lose. Young, they have athletic. nothing to prove. Yep. They are the youngest team out of all 32 teams, the average age of all their players. They're mm -hmm. the youngest team out of all 32. So it's kind of they're going in with this mindset We're of building. Hey, we don't know what we don't know. Haven't been around long enough to – it's like the ignorance is bliss thing. I don't know what I don't – so let's just go out there and try to fucking win. That's it all is, it is. And they, there's no pressure on them. The pressure's on the other team every time because on paper the other team should win. So all the pressure's on them, and Green Bay's mm -hmm. like, "Hey, let's just let's put something together and let's see what happens." So, I would I wouldn't be surprised if you see Green Bay do some crazy stuff because this is going to be potentially their last game. Um, yeah, they and probably like are always thinking about that. Yeah. Having first week buy is not necessarily always a great thing. So mm -hmm. they could come out this break. Yeah, they could have recovered a little bit. They could be a little rusty. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It's a possibility. So, but I still pick up the Four Niners. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we go on to the next one. Green Bay at the 49ers. I'm not, I'm going to take the 49ers as well. That's just... I'd... It's going to be a sweep all over. Because I, I can already see all of the picks. I'm taking all the home teams. I'm Same. not even taking the Chiefs. I'm taking yeah. the Bills. Same. <laughs> I am, so... Yeah. I'm going to take... That's what I'm, th I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We yeah. all doing the same? I, I think yeah. we are... <laughs> all in agreement? Well, I'm, I'm going to pick Lions and the Bills. Just because... Yeah. I would have always picked those. 
But I can switch to the Texans. Just Are you for changing? Fun. Are you changing anything, George? On that? No. no. It's my, uh, I, I will pick Did the Ravens, the 49ers, Lions, and I will pick the Chiefs. Okay. You're oh, so guys. you're going to go different. Okay. Yeah. This go guys. Chiefs. This guys. You know, like they need they star. They need a star there. On second thought. <laughs> what? I'm going to take the Texans. Okay. Ah. Yeah. You see that? And you know what? On a second thought, I'm going to pick the Packers. Woo! What? Let's have some fun! Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. I'm gonna pick the Packers. That's just because I broke the. Uh, I, I yeah. broke the spell, well, right? Yeah. You can pie somewhere. <laughs> you have to pick the Buccaneers. Oh yeah! yeah that come would on! Be fun. That's come on! The Lions is his only my, team left. The Lions is my only team left. Yeah. Uh, but you can pick the team that's gonna send them home. No, then I would have to pick. And then you the stick with the Packers. Bucks for the rest of the. But they're not playing this week. No, but if they if, if they play and then I'll pick the Packers. Pack so you're going to stick line. with what you got? Yeah. It's going to stick with what you got. All, all, right. Right, all, right, all right, all right, The Chiefs, these guys are, are used to the cold. It doesn't matter. None of, nothing matters. Yeah. Nothing matters anymore. You win and you, you go forward, you lose and you go home. Yep. All of these teams have way too much talent to go out and perform poorly, and yet a lot of them still do. So there's really, there's no way of knowing. None of it, nothing matters until the game starts and we see what happens. We yeah, know they, nothing. They Especially, shouldn't play bad. You know what I mean? No, no. They all make good money. They all know <laughs> well, how to play. And some of them well, make politics. great money. But, you know. So that's the they controversy. Lose. Say it. There's a little bit of a conspiracy theory going around that the Dallas Cowboys threw that game. Wow. And lost purposely. Why? Uh. That's the question. There's a lot of hey man. heated discussion. Dak Prescott getting. I know up. why. Neymar kind of <laughs> like rolling a, on the floor. Rolling, <laughs> he's rolling, rolling on, on the, the floor. floor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Did they already right. pick their coach? No. So probably we know who's going to be, right? Listen. We know who's going to be, right? <laughs> who? I, I just, the Patriots. You have to be a fan of the team so. to weigh in on all of this stuff. No. Responsibly, we don't need a new coach. We don't need a new quarterback. Maybe we could use a new defensive coordinator. Because Dan Quinn seems more interested in taking offers from other teams and becoming something, becoming a head coach, which is what he was in the past. That's great. I think we need a defensive coordinator. I feel like if anybody, the defense through the game, you go and watch the all twenty-two. Dak did everything that Dak could. Some of his bad throws. He has so much pressure in his face. What? He's not Superman. He can't fly. Sure. So why can't the O-line hold for longer? Why can't guys get more open? I don't know what was going on. I don't fucking know. But I don't think that we need a new coach. Mike McCarthy, this is one of Dak's best years. I think if you get rid of Mike McCarthy, you get rid of Dak. Because Dak has had, it's been the past three seasons, a new offensive coordinator every season. Let him get adjusted to a playbook and build some stuff around him. Get some better people that are putting all this pressure on C.D. Lamb. Get somebody else out there that can ball. Brandon Cooks was not it. Yeah. Picking up Stephon Gilmore, he's he's a veteran. He had a couple good games. He's not it. He's not the long term. He's not the longevity of this team. He's not going to be. Move away from that. I so think there's we a need lot to draft of missing better. pieces. Yeah. We need to draft better. We need to play better in the big moments. And it's this is the same time every year. We're where we belong. In the off season, we don't have the mental fortitude to win. We just don't. My entire life, never made it to a conference championship game. Not a single one. Have made to the finals at least to the Super no. Bowl. No. The conference the comes su- before the Super yes. Bowl. We didn't even make it to the conference before the Super Bowl. Oh, we don't okay. even make that game. So, well, and why is it called conference? Well, there's two conferences: the AFC. And oh, the okay. NFC. So it's like the final of the conference, and yeah. then you get the final of those two. Okay. So you yeah. have the wild the card Super round, which is why wild, wild cards that we don't know about. Then this round is divisional, so it, it you get clear divisional winners. From here, it jumps to the conference, conference game. So yeah. you'll have one person from the AFC, which would be the semifinal of of the whole conference. Exactly, exactly. and then one from the and then you have them two play for the Super Bowl. So um, it, it is what it the is. Ultimate man. winner. Okay, you know, I understand. It is interesting. I was just watching um, the matches, and for someone who doesn't know, I don't know exactly uh, who is who from each division by lo- looking at the, all of the names. I, I still, I'm still struggling to figure out who is who. Okay, so the team well, that is, is New York. No, so I know, I know, I know. But, but if I had it, if I had it, 
uh, an information. If you have the piece of information that this is from the it's east like or the west, you do, yeah, it's just like basketball. Up exactly. Here, yeah, it is. It is, it is exactly. NFC and down it's here third. would be AFC, and there's four divisions. So yes. this would be the oh. NFC North, East, South, West, and then North, mm-hmm. East, South, West. There's four teams in each division. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So the Chiefs are AFC West, the Bills are AFC East, the Texans are AFC South, and the Ravens are AFC okay. North. Yeah. So after this week, there will only be two divisions left. It'll be either, you know, East versus South or East versus what, whatever it is. And then the conference game becomes who's going to be the division that wins the conference. So right. it'll be... Because this is the eighth, eighth of the finals, and then you have the quarterfinals. And then no, no, it's, it's, it's exactly the same as basketball, but yeah. just the playoff is like seven games. The, the, the it's the exact same one. It's the exact yeah, it's same. Yeah, it's the exact yeah. same. Yeah. I was just saying Divisions that... Divisions, or you I don't was know just, then. Because it's, for example, if I say pistols, I mean, I know it's Detroit, you know, like I don't... But they doesn't come mechanically for me. To, uh, if my mistake is Detroit Lions. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, I, I've, and then I see that nine, 49ers. Funny. I know those two games are from the East. Oh, no. We've been dealing with this. You know, because they. No, the 49ers mm-hmm. are the NFC West. Because <laughs> they're in San Francisco. They're in California. West. They're in the West. Oh, 49ers. Yeah, you see that? I've, I've mixed up with. Well, we've dealt with this since the inception of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. You see that? Because I think of terms, and I don't. It'd be like. You are speaking Portuguese, then you have to switch to English for me. Yes. Like my brain, I'm thinking in football, and I'm like, oh, wait, they don't know. So it's like, I, sometimes we'd be doing picks. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take Houston. I'll take Baltimore. I'll take Green Bay. I'll take Kansas City. I said yes. the cities. I said the name of the teams. He's like, hey, yes. Who the hell is Kansas City? Okay. Who the hell's who's Green Bay? You yes. Know? He's like, oh, yeah. that's the Packers. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that they, just comes from being they, around. There was once that uh, they were talking about a team like, they all picked as like, we okay. picked Chicago, and you didn't know. And I was Bears. like, um, uh, okay, so I don't know which one you picked, <laughs> but I'm going to go with that logo over there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> good, enough. good timing. Really good timing. Fox Sports announced that Cowboys will be retaining head coach Mike McCarthy as he enters the final year of his contract. You just said it. Good. You knew it. <laughs> that just hit right now? No, I'm just Literally. <laughs> I'm just telling you, as a fan, yeah. people get their feelings hurt. You shouldn't make emotional decisions. Hours after a game, everybody's emotional, you know, and then give it a little bit of time. Life goes on. We don't need a new head coach. We just need to play better. We need to create a culture of winning. I, what I, my personal opinion is Dallas is so desirable. The franchise is the m- most valuable franchise in the entire league. It's a valuable place to play. People go and play for the star, and they just feel like they already earned it, in my opinion. Maybe there's some clout that goes along with it, and it's almost like when they get drafted or – brought up to play for the Cowboys, that's their own personal Super Bowl win. Like, oh, I'm playing for the Cowboys. There's no... We need to recreate a culture of winning. Yeah. And not just winning regular season games. I would rather be the Green Bay team, 9-8, and eight, still in the playoffs, than the 12-5 and five regular season champions. Mm-hmm. Which we weren't, by the way. There was people that did better than... Uh, nobody actually got more than 12 wins other than uh, Baltimore. So, in the NFC, we tied... With everybody, as far as you see, now I know Baltimore. Now I know which of the <laughs> yeah. So they, they're they're the only team that even got thirteen wins. But I I'm t- I would rather be a nine win team like the Buccaneers or the Packers still in the playoffs than play really well in the regular season and then shit the bed when it comes to the playoffs, which seems to be what we always do hmm. every year. But it just comes with you the have, territory. You, you have, have the to... brand, but you don't have the culture. Well. Hmm? There's not well, much. Is that is that though. When you're like that, that's why it's referred to as America's team. Though, it's like we're national, we get nationally televised games almost yes. every single week. And I think out yeah, of that's why we play 17 true. games. 16 out of those 17 games, whatever network we were on, whether it's CBS, ESPN, ABC. Fox, NBC, whatever that network was, their A list, like their number one mm-hmm. crew. Sure. That's the crew they put on the Dallas Cowboys game every time. Whether it's a primetime game at 7 mm-hmm. o'clock or it's a 12 o'clock game on a Sunday, they put their top guys to commentate on that game. 16 out of 17 games. One game they didn't, and it was like week four or something. That's how it much priority. Yeah. Prior there's a lot of pressure to play there, 
and everybody talks about it. Everybody loves to hate on big teams and big names. Oh. And well, and, but, probably, but Dallas has. Sorry to interject, but no, but I also think there's a cultural there's a there's a culture behind the Dallas Cowboys too. One, it has that America's America's team that stigma, but it's also a huge huge team uh, internationally in Mexico, mm-hmm. Central and South America because. I mean that is seen as America's team, and <clears throat> but that's due to successful also, marketing and right, right. The back of I mean that Jerry Jones did that, and I'll give him credit for that. Where Jerry Jones seems to take a back seat now. He's the owner, but he also is the general manager, and he needs to let someone else take that GM role. He's yeah. too involved, and he he traded and did stuff with Trey Lance this season, bringing him in. Didn't even discuss any of that with the coaches or anybody, and they just got the news that he did it. So imagine you're a head coach of a team, you're trying to structure things, and you're trying to, you know, plan for the future, and he just does something out from under you, doesn't even tell you about it. Hey, by the way, this is your backup quarterback. And you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll try to make it work then, because you have no say on anything. Right. He needs to give a professional who's, that's what they've done their whole life. You just bought a team. You've done a lot with AT&T and the marketing and get us on a global stage. You've done your job. You did a great job at yeah. that. Take a back seat, man, chill. Yeah, exactly. You're old. Chill. Watch the game. Stop stressing yourself out. Trying to Enjoy what you help build. Yeah. It, Enjoy done, what you help build. You've done right? enough. You've done enough. Yeah. And I respect and I am appreciative of what he, mm-hmm. what he has done. But it's enough. And I draw the line there. No more. Yeah. But say, yeah, a lot of the this same hate, thing with Al Davis for the Raiders. Same with Al Davis for the Raiders and then his son, and you know, Mark. Mark. But it's the same crap. This is how uh, some institutions fail and some of them are successful. The, because they know they know the point that they have to change uh, the culture or change the executives in order to to move on to the next step. Maybe even worse than those two though is uh, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, um, Tepper, whatever his name is, or the, he, or the Chargers. He forces the head coach to have a personal meeting with him after every game to report like why whatever happened and what happened blah, blah, blah. that's why he can't find anybody right now that wants to go take that job because they don't want to deal with him so that that's what it is he's just too involved as an owner yeah and he's turned over two or three coaches in the past two which or three years it? which the which Carolina, Carolina, Carolina Panthers, Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. and then uh, the opposite side of that spectrum is the uh, Los Angeles Chargers where he has he just doesn't give a shit about that team whatsoever he's like I don't care they finally made a change this year which was surprising yeah but if he's too involved with the painters why why don't he you know create like a little better logo for it then? I don't know. Uh, you know I mean? There's always something, right, man? People won't come to the game anymore. Some culture. He's actually the second wealthiest owner out of all 32 owners of NFL yeah. teams. So he has the money to back the team and, you know, Pay a designer. do whatever he wants. But he, he's too involved. So, But what I will say is there's a lot of talk from people that don't make the playoffs about teams that lose in the playoffs. And I'd, I'd like to nip that in the butt a little bit. So. If you want to talk about us and how we went out, you got to make it to the playoffs too. At least. Yeah. So go ahead and bow out of the conversation, and we'll see you next year if you make it. I know we lose a lot, but at least we're there. Mm-hmm. I was just bringing up the point that there was. I didn't some, say your name. I didn't say your any, team. Yeah. It's not Somebody you. It's not you. Yeah. <laughs> it, you've got people that are. Uh, if you've been anywhere on social media the past two days, the entire NFC East is going nuts. They're so excited that the Eagles and the Cowboys went out first round. You got Redskins, right. Commanders, the Washington fans, and the New York Giants fans saying that was the best day they've had all season because they've had a shit season and they got to watch both of us in their division go out first round. So I'm sure that was great for them. And Washington thinks they're really in a out of everybody in the NFC East, they think they are the best setup for next season because they're going to get good draft picks and they just got a brand new GM and they fired their head coach. They're going to get a new head coach. All this change coming. Change does not equal production. No. And I say instant. we away. Yeah, so instant production. We've, we've reached the point of the season. I have a serious question. Sorry. I'm, I don't I, believe- I'm elongating the podcast here right now. But... How many players you pick from the draft? Each team, you mean? Yeah, on average. Uh, I don't know the exact number. Isn't it like 15 to 20? 
it changes due to strategy based off of you have rounds is just like an nba yeah okay yeah. yes there are rounds and i think this would be like a google question to answer it on average because a lot of teams trade away picks yes so you don't end up getting to select anyone in the draft because you gave it for someone else. But, but on say, average. yeah, but well, not just average, but well, say you don't like do any of it. Yeah. Thirty-two teams and how many players are there to be picked? Sixty-four. What's Mister Relevant? Two hundred and fifty. Twenty-eight. No, four hundred. Uh, currently, each of the thirty-two clubs receives one pick in each of the seven rounds. So seven. Seven, seven, seven rounds. Picks. That should have been an easy. So answer. it's two hundred and something. It's 32 times yeah, 7. Yeah. It's 210 plus 14. It'll be yeah, 224. 24. So, seven players. I mean, you said about you know the, the Dallas doing better draft. Round. Does it change much? Uh, because you already have a structure. I mean, you're going to have to fire seven players to be able to well, get no. seven more players. Sometimes you have seven players whose contracts up. So, you'd either be renewing their contract or you get rid of them. Yeah. They go into free agency. They'll go, they're a free agent. They'll just yeah. go find a team. And you bring someone else on. Or if their contract's not up, then you trade them. And I'll take one of your earlier picks for one of my good guys. Or I'll, I'll trade you one of my good guys for some of your earlier picks. Because there's a lot of good guys coming out of college that we're really looking for. Whatever that may be. A lot of our best players have come from mid-round. Like round three, round four. That's where I believe we've gotten... Um, some of our running backs, like Tony Pollard, defensive guys like Deron Bland. A lot of guys that end up making a big impact on the team aren't always first-rounders. But the first-rounders are the best players. So I think every year you look at all the positions, there's 11 players on each side of the ball. So you look at those 11 positions. Where do we need help? Where are we lacking the most? So we... The offensive line, it's five people on the O-line. There's a center, two guards, two tackles. But there's a left tackle, a right tackle, a left guard, a right guard, and typically they stick to their side. You can move them around. It's better if it's just a left guard or tackle on the left side. Oh, our right tackle sucks. Our left guard sucks. In the draft, those are players we're looking at picking up. Um, our corners, you know, in the secondary, whatever position is lacking, that's what you look to try and do. And then there's names on a board. So when you're looking for it goes, then your strategy changes. You're like, all right, well, now let's look at this. We're going to do something else. And it gets very difficult when you do well, but you don't win the Super Bowl. Or you don't even because make the final like playoffs. Now you're last. Far, yeah, you're like Essentially. out of 32, you may be like on the 18th. Of yeah, so out of 32, you end up winning the Super Bowl. You're pick 32. If you had the worst record, you're 32, you have pick one. This year's interesting because who ended up 32 was the Panthers. And last year in a big deal that they made, they traded away their first round pick for this year to the Bears. So the Bears have like the number one pick. Okay. The Bears also did poorly this year. So they have like a three or five pick. So they can pick like a couple, two or three guys from the very beginning, which is why it's like that. You have teams that are doing terribly. It's supposed to give them an advantage, like take the best guys to make it more but even. But at the end of the day, it's seven players only that you're adding to your uh, squad. From the draft, yes. From the draft. Yes. And then you have players that are end of contract that you don't want to renew. and, and But still, let's say you have only four players running the contract, you still have to fire three in order to get you know three more. Yeah, you can cut players um, depending on their value. The structure also, because each player has the, each club. I think I don't know if it's like the NBA where you have based on the years they're playing the league, they can make yes. a maximum and a minimum. Man, I probably NFL and different, NBA, NBA different games. I think it's the what do you call the NBA of, like super max contract? Yeah, or super max contract. So in the NFL, it's different. You have to be in the NFL for a certain amount of time to be considered vested, which mm -hmm. is whether you play or not, you can still receive money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then there's rookie contracts. Guaranteed. And then once you're, yeah. yeah. Then once you've done a certain amount of time, you can only get this tier of contract. And then yes. once you're a veteran or whatever, you've mm -hmm. over a certain amount of time, you can never get under whatever that contract yes. is. So, um, I've always thought about that. Like if there were ring chasers just really wanted to win, like, could you go play for a team? Like, listen, dude, I'll play for 40 grand this year. Yeah. I made money. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'll play for free. I want to win a ring. Do you, would you, you blame them? No. Fuck no, I wouldn't blame them. But you right. can't do it. Yeah, but you know what? 
No, no I wouldn't, wouldn't blame him. That that is sheer competitiveness. Exactly. Like, I don't. I've made enough money. Yeah. I'll do it for free. But if you ask NFL players, like if we knew one, they would not play for free. The amount of turmoil they're putting their body through for the whole season, none of them would play for free. Yeah. It's too much of a risk. Oh, too yeah. little of money. Oh, it's like. If you're guaranteed, like, the insurance and all that stuff or whatever, but I just think there's a fine line between love for the game mm-hmm. and it being your career. And I think a lot of guys would love to say, like, let's go chase a ring. But when it comes down to it, no. and, also, and it creates precedent. It, so, it, the politics of it. And it coincides really also with the stage of their life, their parents. Now they start getting responsible. They start rethinking what I'm going to do for the next eight, like 50 years. Yeah, yeah. So you see, it's a period that you say, okay, that this is over. This is like one, two more years. Yeah. What am I going to do later? Yeah, what am I going to do after that? for that at every stage, which is what's interesting. You get a, yeah, a person, yeah. it's their last year about to retire. Oh, you can take a pay cut. You've been here for a while. Well, could be my last year ever playing. I'm going to squeeze this lemon for all the juice it's going to give me. You know, a, a, a rookie that's just coming off a rookie contract, are you going to take a more team-friendly deal? Um, get more people around you to try and win. Well, I'm at the prime of my athleticism. I need to go out and try and get everything that I can possibly get because this creates the precedent for my next contract. Yes. So it's like, I'm. could I? Yeah, I guess. But who? it's not the right business move. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they always try and put it on the player. But and there's most a of lot the players of people, don't make those decisions. Yeah, there's They're a lot agents. of people behind you know, yeah. Yeah. making those decisions and then you know having the conversations with them. So. Okay. Oh, Let's wrap it up. We're 235 days away for the next time I get to see the Dallas Cowboys play. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll leave you guys with that. Yes. I'm heartbroken. All right. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Well, um, we still have some football still to go until the... That's ruined for me. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's fine. Oh, the money for me. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't... <laughs> Yeah. I think he, he missed like two times the yeah. left eye. He's high. crying. Right. No, he's just like. <laughs> oh my crying. god! No, I got it. Oh my god! <laughs> so was so sad. I'm, I'm so sorry about. That. I'm just really sorry about that. It's a bad place to be, guys. <laughs> but at least we made it. We always have next year. Life moves on. There you go. Can't sulk. Yes. Unfortunately, I'm all too used to this. It's the same every year. Well, uh, cheers to that, brother. Cheers. Welcome to my life. <laughs> I'm rooting for the Detroit Lions, man. They've, yeah. they've been going through a little bit of what we've been going through. Uh, yeah. Do they have How a many chance? years? How many years? It's 28 or something. Like 30 years since these guys have won a fucking playoff game. Yeah. It's like 30 years. Never Detroit has not won. Bowl. They have been going through. And you guys wanted me to pick the other team. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the Lions. That's good. You do you, boo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look what happens to the teams that I support. It doesn't mean much. I'm just right. <laughs> I'm rooting for them. Doesn't mean they'll, they'll go anywhere. In fact, I don't really think they will, but I'm rooting for them. Very much rooting for Let's them. Let's hope they do. I'd I love to see story. a Lions Ravens Super Bowl. I think that'd be cool. Among the eight cl- eight teams, uh, which, Lions one, Bills. which one do you think has the most chance to win? Chiefs. Chiefs? I say Ravens. Bird. Let's see what happens. Uh, both, I mean, both are very, very good teams. Okay. Yeah. Chiefs and Ravens. We'll find out this week. Right. And the reason I say that is it, it ha- this happens every year. Like, Patrick Mahomes does something different. Yeah. Comment. Subscribe. subscribe. Good. And share with your friends. There you go. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>